Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise on this morning. Hallelujah. We're here on this Pentecost Sunday. Come on, somebody act like they love Jesus in this house on this morning. Hallelujah. I know that he's been real good to each and every one of us just by the evidence that you're sitting in here on today. So, God, we just take this moment to give your name glory. God, we take this moment to give your name the praise. Father God, for you are high and lifted up, oh God, in this place, God. Hallelujah, Lord, we will never let a rock cry out in our place, God, for you are worthy of our praise, God. Anybody know that he's worthy of our praise? Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah all over this house. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we give you glory. Lord, we give you hallelujah, Jesus. We give you honor, God. Hallelujah, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, we acknowledge you in this place. We acknowledge you in this place. Lord Jesus, you are welcome, God. Come in the house, oh God. Allow your spirit to fill this house, oh God. Allow your spirit to overflow in this house, God. Allow your power to overflow in this house on today, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, we love you this morning, God. We love you, God. Hallelujah. All glory and honor to your name, Jesus. All glory and honor to you.
Christ. I'm not holding anything back. Yes, Lord. Anybody here ready? Are you ready today, beloved? Are you ready today, beloved? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. I said the spirit of the living God. We're going to have an encounter with the Holy Ghost today. I said we're going to have an encounter with the spirit of the living God in this house today. Hey, Lord. I wish you'd tell somebody I thank God that you're here with me. Why don't you be my praise partner? Come on and find a praise partner. Hey, Lord. Find a praise partner. And tell them. Let's praise the Lord together. Let's worship the Lord together. Let's magnify the Lord together. Find your praise partner. Come on, find your praise partner. Ask them, would you help me praise God? Would you help me glorify Him? Would you help me magnify Him? When I think of the goodness of Jesus, has He done anything for you? Come on, praise team. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise God in here. Let's praise God in here. Let's praise God in here. It's not about a sign. It's not about a show. It's not about a fashion. But to give God the praise. To magnify Him in the beauty of holiness. Come on, praise team. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name, God. How many knew that you know that the Lord is high above the heavens and his glory is above the nations? Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together in this place on this morning. Come on, we came to magnify him. We came to glorify him because he is worthy to be praised. Come on, we give you high praise in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. You are worthy, God. You are holy, God. You are mighty, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above the nations. You know the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. And his glory above Oh, the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nations. And His glory above the nations. You know the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nations. And His glory above the nations. Oh, give God the highest praise. Acknowledge Him always. And all God's people say, Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Halle, Halle, Halle. Oh, the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. Come on, if somebody come to give Him praise on today. Oh, and His glory above the nations. And His glory above the nations. Yes, God, we lift Your name on high in this place. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. Lord, You are high and lifted up, oh God. Oh, and His glory above the nations. And His glory above. Oh, say if you really 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you're worthy, God. Lord, you are worthy, God. Yes, God, you are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. You are holy, God. You are holy, God. You are holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. You are holy, God. You are holy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are holy, God. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would lift up their worship to the Lord right now in this place. Hallelujah. On this Pentecost Sunday. Hallelujah. Lord, you are holy, God. You are righteous, God. You are faithful, God. Hallelujah. You are mighty, God. There is none like you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. And we call you holy in this place. We call you holy, God. You are so holy to us, Lord. Yeah, hallelujah. You are holy, God. You are holy, God. There is none like you. There is none like you, Father God. No one who is a friend like you. The word says, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will lift me up. When friends are not around, hallelujah, he is there. When we feel like we can't go to anyone else with our problems, like no one else will understand, the Lord is there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is there. Yes. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Lord, and we just take this moment to worship you. Come on, all over this house, lift your hands in this place. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody raise up their worship to the Lord. Let the Lord hear your worship. It's not about me. It's, it's not about you, but it's all about him. Come on, I wish somebody would just say something sweet to the Lord. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would just love on him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way in our hearts, Lord. Lord God, just as the Spirit fell in the house, in the upper room, God, fall upon us today, God. Lord, fall in our minds, God. Fall in our hearts, God. Lord, let your Spirit overtake even our homes, God. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy of our praise, God. You're worthy of our, the adoration, God. Hallelujah. Lord God, we adore you in this place, God. We adore you in this place, God. We adore you in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're worthy, God. There is none like you. There is none like you, Father. There is none like you, God. Hallelujah. There is none like you, God. Hallelujah. There's nobody like you. Nobody greater, God. Nobody holier, God. Nobody mightier than you, God. Nobody who is able to keep us, God. Hallelujah. In the midst of our despair, God, your hand is there, God, to lift us up, God, and all we have to do is acknowledge you, acknowledge you in our lives. The psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes to the hill from which cometh my help, knowing that my help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. I don't know who needs to be reminded of that this morning, but I want to let you know that your help comes from the Lord. Not your jobs, not your friends, not your spouse, not even your children, not your finances. But your help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. To your name, Jesus, you are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So holy to me. 
welcome in this house. I want y'all to help us sing this song. Oh, I call you holy. I call you your name. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you, I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you be. Yes, 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 yes. I call you faithful God. Your name 
great and mighty is our Lord. Everybody, great and mighty is our Lord. One more time, great and mighty is our Lord. Sing it loud, great and mighty is our Lord. One more time, great and mighty is our Lord. yourself great and mighty is my God that there's nobody like you. Hallelujah. hallelujah that there's nobody like you. nobody like your Lord 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 come on put your hands together in this place and give him praise hallelujah 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 Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Great and mighty. Great and mighty. Great and mighty. The things we search for, the things we try, but there's nobody like the Lord. Anybody share that testimony? Anybody share that witness that there's nobody like the Lord? Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody. Nobody. Why don't you tell him right there? He's in your face right there. Tell him right there. Nobody like you, Lord. Come on and tell him. Come on and tell him. Nobody like you, Lord. Come on and tell him. All over the house. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody. Nobody like you, Lord. Nobody like you, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's great and mighty, beloved. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for his presence. We thank God for his power. We thank God for his anointing. Amen. That destroys the yokes. Amen. His anointing. Yes, Lord. That is here to bless us. His anointing that is here to deliver us. His anointing that's here to comfort us. How many thank God for his anointing? Yes, Lord. I thank God for his anointing. I thank God for his anointing. Amen. And we thank God for you, beloved. We give God praise for you. We exalt the name of the Lord for you. Amen. To all our guests, we thank God for you. Come on and give God praise for all our guests this morning. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for you. We pray that you have an excellent, wonderful, thunderous time in worship today. That you would experience the true and living God. Yes, Lord. And he meets you right there in your life. 
Amen. We thank God. Amen. For our first lady, we give God praise for her. We magnify the Lord for her. Amen. I had to leave her home. She wasn't feeling good. She had twisted her back yesterday and it seemed to get worse last night. And thank God we got a Luke in the house. I say, thank God we got a physician in the house. Amen. We got a Luke in the house. Amen. And had to see about her. She couldn't move and I'm talking about nothing. So keep in your prayers. Keep in your prayers. We're about to take her to the hospital, but we put on some soaking worship music and we just worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord. Worship is a healing. You can get healed in worship. I know as quick as we want to run to the hospital, but I, I had met a doctor, one that can heal you. I never met a doctor in this earth that can heal you. They can comfort you. They can give you some coping methods, but it's only one that can heal you. How many thank God for the healer? Anybody met him as a healer? You ever seen him as a healer in your life? Have you ever healed your body? Have you ever touched your soul? Is there anybody in God's house that can declare him as a healer? I wish there was somebody that would magnify the Lord. You know he had to bring your blood pressure down. You know he had to save your heart. You know you was at the verge of a stroke. But you know that it was by God's grace and his mercy. How many thank God for his grace? He's a merciful God. He's a merciful God. I sit here, baby. Sit here and worship. Hey, glory to God. God is here. Sit here and worship. God is here. Sit here. Sit here and worship. See, sometimes we go and call people. We go and ask for people for help. But I tell you to start going into worship. I dare you to start looking to the hills. We got to look to the hills. She was in pain and even took a, a couple of phone calls, but they don't even realize she couldn't even move. Barely it hurt when she talked, but it's by God's grace that God will do it for you. When you be about his business, he'll love you. He'll love you. Hey, thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's why I praise God. See, when you know that he's real, anybody know that he's real? I say, anybody know that he's real? Yeah, so somebody's been delivered in here before. Somebody has been set free before. Somebody has seen the hand of God in your life before. Somebody know that he's made a way before. I know that he's real. He's real. He's real. He's real. Before I call anybody in this earth to help me, I'm calling on the name of Jesus. Before I call anybody to help, I'm calling on the name of Jesus. He's my helper. He's my strength. He's my way maker. In the time of need, he'll never leave you. He won't forsake you. He won't forsake you. He won't forsake you. Come on, we thank God for you worshiping with us today. And I see him, Tampa. We give God praise for you. Yes, Lord. And even you in our social media. We pray that God blesses you. We pray that you experience that same anointing that is flowing in this house amongst God's people. Yes, Lord. We thank God for today. Amen. Let us, let us receive our offering in Jesus' name. It's offering time in the house of God, beloved. I said it's offering time in the house of God. Yes, Lord. See, some people was waiting for this part. Some people received a revelation and know what it is to be a cheerful giver. Some people have seen the revelation and understand what happens. That 
that has a man purpose in his heart, so let him give. Beloved, it's offering time. It is God's will that we, somebody help me through here. It is God's will that we what? Don't run from it. Bring it into your life. Bring it into your life. Welcome it. Give prosperity access. It is God's will that we what? It is God's will that we prosper. It is God's will. Somebody shout increase. Increase. It isn't God's will that we live a pitied life. Where people look upon his people and pity us. That's not God's will for us. God anticipates us to be his centered attraction. This is why he put his blessings on his people. He don't want us to be pitied. He didn't bring us out of darkness to be pitied. Look at 2 Kings 7 and 1 in the message translation as a passage of increase. Somebody shout increase. Increase. Yes, Lord. Did anybody love increase? Elijah, this is 2 Kings 7, 1 through 2 in the message translation. Elijah said, listen, God's word, the famine is over. The famine is over. Listen to God's word. The famine is the drought that you've been living in. The barrenness that you've been living in. The the failure, the cycles of failure. The famine is over. This time tomorrow, food would be plentiful. Somebody say plentiful. Plentiful. Food would be plentiful. See, we can't be afraid of words. See, Satan has put a negative connotation on prosperity, on abundance. Yes, we can be humble and blessed. Yes, God expects us to be blessed. He said, this time tomorrow, food would be plentiful. Plentiful. It doesn't matter what, how they skyrocket uh, uh, meat in the store, eggs and cereal. And what do people, I haven't been in a grocery store in a long time. What, uh, my wife cooks sometimes. I ain't mean to say that, baby. But all that stuff in the grocery store. It's, it's plentiful. The, the economics has skyrocketed. But not for you. You will live in a plentiful life. A handful of meal for a shekel. Two handfuls of grain for a shekel. The market at the city gate will be buzzing. Beloved, regardless of what this the state, the federal government takes or tries to do, it can't affect you as God's people. God supplies all. I wish somebody would help me right there. God supplies all. All my needs according to his riches and glory. God wants us to think like him, beloved. He wants us to take those things, though it be not as though it were. In chaos, God said, when there was nothing, God said, let that be. Regardless of what you see in your refrigerator, when you're facing the bills, the mail, the car payment, the lights, the insurance, all these things that the economy has risen up. You think God has forgotten about you? Do you think God would not make a way for you? God will make a way for you. You're the center of God's attention. He has blessed you and put his hands on you. Somebody give God some praise right there. But you have to think this thing in your mind first. You have to think it until you believe it. You have to talk about it until you believe it in your heart. 
You got to recite it and meditate on the abundance of God, the goodness of God, until you believe that thing. And then when you believe it, you begin to live that thing. That thing will become your life. That's why you could take a word. God said, meditate on my word. How often? Day and night. You meditate on that word, that thing has to come to life. That thing brings life. That thing brings a dead situation. You have the power to bring life to it. See, somebody's finances is in a dead situation. Somebody's credit is in a dead situation. But all it takes is a little commitment to God. A little faith in God. A little willingness to be obedient to God. And how many know he can turn all that stuff around? He'll give you a word. He'll give you a word in his birth. He'll give you a word. And you meditate on that thing. Your whole life will change. Look at Micah 2 and 10 in the New International Version. I believe the word. Anybody believe the word? This is is why he gave us Micah 2 and 10 in the NIV, the New International Version. I love this right here. When I when I, I caught hold to this passage, and this changed my life. I caught hold to this, and this this thing became my life. Micah 2 and 10. And I've said this before. But see, Satan tries to make the church weak, beloved. He tries to make the church weak. But not for you, beloved. You're going to demonstrate what God really wants to do in this world. I say God is going to use you to demonstrate it. How many believe that today? I say how many really believe that today? God wants to use you. But you have to know this. You have to be willing. Look at Micah 2 and 10 in the, in the NIV. Somebody help me read this. What did it say? Is it up here? Somebody help me. What did it say? Come on, what did it say, church? Get up. Y'all scared? What does it say, church? What? No, come on and say it like you believe it. You all know how to read. Come on and say it like you believe it. Get up. Get up what? Get up what? Get up, go up. Now what? For this is your finances. This is not your resting place. So get up from where you went financially and allow better to come. This is not your resting place. Come on and tell somebody that's not your resting place. That's not your, I know you got comfortable and you thought that was it, but why don't you tell them, tell them again to what? Tell them again to get up. Get up and go, get up and go away. Get up from past dues. Get up from 30 day notices. Get up from 90 day notice. Get up from bad credit. Tell somebody again to get up. Tell them this is not your resting place. Because it is defiled. It is ruined beyond all remedy. You got to move. You have to move. Let that word come alive. It's not your resting place. When God wants better for you, somebody shout increase. When you hadn't been living in increase, you got to get out of that. You've been living in rest. That's not your rest. Your rest is increase. Your rest is the abundant place. Your wealth is riches. Your, your rest, beloved. Get up from there. Yes, Lord. Your business has been waiting for you. You got to get up from there. The business had been profitable. It had came forward because you made this your rest. You got to get up and go away from that. You got to get up. Let that word come alive in you. Beloved, we offer a few different ways to sow your seed today. We offer text to give. And these ways are on the screen behind me. The text to give number is 1844. 1844- 468-3549. You can text that number and follow the secured prompts. And we also have our cash app. And the cash app is dollar sign IC Ministries Tampa. Dollar sign IC, excuse me, IC Ministries Tampa. Amen, amen. 
Amen. Beloved, we thank God for you. I agree to come and serve you. We'll sing a song of praise. And we'll, be, we'll, we'll ask that, that Reverend Anderson would come and pray over our offering in Jesus' name. We give, we give God praise for him joining us today. Come on and give God some praise for him. Amen. I agree to come. We'll sing a song. And we'll ask that Reverend Anderson would come and pray over our offering. revival we had a marvelous time in the lord so we thank each of you for for worshiping with us on that day on those days excuse me and we also thank all of the pastors and preachers who came out especially to pastor suresh from ic ministries india come on let's bless god for him amen we ask that everyone would keep ic ministries india in your prayers as they continue to do the work of God. We ask that each of you would join us every morning, Monday through Friday, for our daily morning devotion. Let's start our day seeking the mind of Christ. Let's make our plans align with his plans for our day. Proverbs 19, 21 says, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Please join us this Wednesday online via Zoom for our financial literacy class. We will have our financial literacy class uh, for our study on this Wednesday night. We will have a special guest speaker for this class. Again, it will be this Wednesday at 7 p.m. via our regular Zoom link. It will also be here in the sanctuary. So if you want to, uh, if you have questions specifically or uh, you are more than welcome to come here and to speak with the facilitator for that night, uh, that meeting will also be hosted by our very own sister, Tracia. So we thank God for her and the team uh, that will be teaching that finance class here in the church on Wednesday. Amen. 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 On Thursdays of each week, we invite all of our youth to join us for our Kids Zone Zoom Bible Study. This is an opportunity for our youth to fellowship together and to increase their knowledge of God and the Bible. If there are any youth that do not have the link, please feel free to always share. Philippians 4 and 6 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. 
So join us every Saturday at 9 a.m. as we do just that and make our petition, petitions known to God. Calling all the men to join us on Tuesday, May 28th at 7 p.m. on Zoom as the IC Warriors conducts their men's ministry meeting. This is an opportunity for all men to fellowship together and to study God's word. On June 2nd, we will be having our youth night here at the church, June 2nd at 7 p.m. So if you want your kids to come out, grandchildren, niece and nephews to come out and just to be in a Christian environment, Christian atmosphere, please bring them out on June 2nd. On June 8th, we're inviting everyone to join us as we go out to win souls for Jesus for our community outreach. Amen. We ask that everyone would meet us here at the church at 1 p.m. on June 8th. On June 8th. Let's witness for Jesus. Ladies, you're invited to join us on Saturday, June 15th, as the Women's Ministry conducts their monthly group meeting. Again, that will be on Saturday, June 15th. And then lastly, we are still planning our global mission trip to India. Anyone who is interested in attending, please see Minister McKinnon immediately after service. If you'd like to be a blessing and donate to this effort, or if you would like to sponsor someone, please uh, see a pastor, first lady, or Mother Williams in that regard. Uh, we want to go over to IC Ministries India and continue to bless and be a, a blessing and support the ministry over there. So again, that will be on November 3rd through the 10th. November 3rd through the 10th. Amen. Again, if you'd like to sow into this effort, you can utilize our established methods for giving uh, via text to give or our cash app. These are announcements. Be blessed. Amen. Thank God for our announcements. Thank God. We had a wonderful time in revival. Monday, Tuesdays, and Tuesday and Wednesday, didn't we? Didn't the Lord bless us? Didn't the Lord bless us? Yes, he blessed us. He blessed us. Yeah, Minister, Minister uh, Matthews from uh, St. Pete came to bless us. Uh, Minister Simmons and, his, and my cousin Michelle, they was here to bless us. Amen, amen. Along with Pastor Sirish and uh, District Elder Mickens topped it off on Wednesday night. So we, we was in revival and we're still in revival. Anybody still in revival? I said anybody still anybody still in revival? Anybody still in revival? Yes, Lord. So we thank God, beloved. Just as the announcers said, we're preparing to travel to India. So keep Pastor Suresh and Pastor Sunil in your prayers and, and give to that cause. If you can't make it, sow a seed in that effort. They're, they're planning a, 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 a detailed uh, itinerary for us to go to villages, to feed, to teach, and we're going we're gonna to bring some things uh, to be a blessing to these uh, villages uh, over in India. So if you would like to be there and, and can't, or if you want to go, just let us know. Amen. You don't have to be a member here, but we definitely would love the effort. Amen. And we're here packed the pew Sunday. We thank God for everyone that brought a guest today. Come on again. Give God a praise for all the those that brought their guests. Come on, if you brought your guests, stand up. Stand up if you brought your guests. You and your guests, stand up. You and your guests, stand up. Let us see you. Let us see you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Amen. 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 You'll have to if you're different. Don't worry about it. We got you. Amen. But we just honor you. We honor you. We appreciate you taking the time from your worship uh, services to be with us. Thank God for you. Good to see my Aunt Pearl in the house today. Amen. 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 Good to see her. 
She brought the crew with her. Amen, amen. Letha, I'm not going to say your name. So don't bury your, your face down there, Letha. I'm not going to say your name again. Amen. So thank God for you. Amen. It's always good to worship with family. We grew up, we grew up with a praying grandmother. Y'all remember those praying grandmothers? Yes, Lord. We grew up, but we don't have an excuse. I can't tell you that I wasn't shown the right way. My decisions all the time. All right. But I can't tell you, I, I, I don't have that excuse. I was shown the right way. And I thank God for the right way. Yes, Lord. Thank God for those praying grandmothers. Thank God for anybody. Thank God. Why y'all didn't thank God for those praying grandmothers? Yes, Lord. God sent them for us to be an example. He knew how you will live right now. He knew your decisions along the way. That's why he sent you the praying grandmother. That's why he sent you the stern granddaddy that didn't talk a lot. But when you saw them, you saw discipline. When you saw them, you saw structure. They didn't talk a lot. They didn't have to. But they was just showing you what a father does. They're there. If you ever need something, you know who to go to. So thank God for those legacy holders, those praying grandmothers. And those, those grandfathers, amen, amen. We're going to bless you in the word. But before the word of God comes, we'll be blessed by morning sun. Come on, give God praise for our musicians also. We thank God for them. Amen. Oh, we got LJ over here. Amen. Thank God for them. Thank God for them. that the Lord just wants a yes. Hallelujah. That's all he wants is a yes. He wants a willing heart. A willing heart. A willing hand. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
to hear what the Spirit has to say unto the church. Let that be sweet fellowship, Lord, until you change us, until you transform us. Change the way that we think, Lord. Change, Lord, us. Take us from glory to glory. Bless, Lord, every heart Bless every mind. Let the sick say I've been healed. Let those that are oppressed be set free. 
Father, if there's any, Lord, going through bereavement, comfort them in this time, Lord. Give them strength and salvation, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I, God put some special people in our lives. And if you look, at our lives there's no stage in your life that God didn't send someone to be there for you we might not have received them but God always sent a witness that he's there someone to offer guidance offer love and I was sitting there thinking and my mind went back. I thank God for uh, Mother Anderson. Amen. Come on, give God praise for her. Amen. I thank God for her. She's one of those standard bearers. She, she's going to talk to you. I remember sitting as a, as a, in, in high school under the tree and all that stuff. But it's certain people that didn't play with you. You can play with other people. But you come across them, they're going to tell you the truth. And I thank God Mother Anderson was always a standing bearer. And she's still holding the bloodstained black banner. Telling the men that, and young women that people might not have time for. That might not see and observe. But women of God like her, they're, they're telling them the truth. Though it might be perceived hard, but it's the truth. So I thank God for you. I thank God for you. Amen. You mean the world to me. And you've definitely made a difference in my life. As well as your niece, Felicia. So we thank God for you. Amen. Let's call your attention to the book of Acts. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at the, the first chapter. Let's read the uh, fourth verse. And then let's skip down to the eighth verse. And then we'll move. To Acts 2, 1 through 4. And I'll read this in the New and Living Translation. Amen. Acts 1 and 4. Once when you was eating with them. He commanded them. Not to leave Jerusalem. Until the Father sends you the gift he, what? The gift that he promised. As I told you before. Let me read the film first. John baptized with water. But in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Yes, Lord, with the Holy Spirit. The eighth verse. Actually, let me go to seven and eight. Seven and eight, excuse me. He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. And they are not for what? Yes, Lord, as much as you want to know everything. As much as you think you know everything. But this is for, is for you not to know. The 8th verse. But you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Telling people about me. Huh? Huh? 
telling people about me everywhere. I like y'all. I like y'all. Y'all talk. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Let's look at second uh, Acts 2. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And I'll read this again in the New and Living Translation. Amen. What a beautiful day it is. Acts 2, 1 through 4. And I'll read this in the New and Living Translation. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers. Anybody in here? Okay, all right. All right. All the believers were meeting together in one place. Yes, Lord. The second verse, suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring and mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone, what? Tell somebody, you have to be present. You have to be present. You have to be present. You have to be present in order to get the suddenly that you need for your life. You can't get the sudden. I can't get, we can't get the suddenly until we're present. We have to be present in order to get the suddenly. And it's right there is where the change happens in our life. The suddenly. I knew who you were before this suddenly happened. Suddenly you talk differently. Suddenly you believe differently. Suddenly you stop cussing. Suddenly you stop doing this and you stop doing that. It was a suddenly. Anybody need a suddenly in their lives? Yes, Lord. A mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of fire, excuse me, like tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other tongues or other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this, gave them this ability. Amen. Beloved, all over the world now, you're going to hear his Pentecost. A lot of the pulpits are probably sharing the same messages. It was on that day of Pentecost. That day that was identified as a Jewish holiday. The early harvest time. It was the Hebrew religious groups. This, this Jewish holiday, the day of Pentecost. And when this day was fully come, see, before Pentecost, they didn't know what to anticipate. They only knew what Jesus told them to go and wait for the power to come. To go and don't you leave Jerusalem until you get the power. Don't leave Jerusalem. So today, let's talk about the promise is for everyone. The promise is for everyone. And in order for us to get the promise, we have to be in place spiritually, physically, to receive the promise. Because can't you imagine Jesus told them to go to Jerusalem and wait? And if their flesh would have told them, they, okay, I'll go, but then they got distracted. They could have had other desires. They could have saw and heard other people wondering, why are you sitting here? 
the one that you used to serve, the one that you used to walk with. He died. He was crucified. The one that you walk with that did uh, miracles and, and blessed the people, that he's not there anymore. But what are you doing waiting? Regardless of if the people understood, they understood the assignment. They understood the assignment. And I wonder if we have gotten a download from God. What does God anticipate? For you in 2024. If you receive the power. God has called all of us. God has put all assignments on all of us. But the truth and the question is. What does the father expect from you. In 2024. The promise is for everybody. And this Pentecost experience that Jesus was telling them to go and wait until you endure with the power that you need. It was really a call for action. It was a time of preparation because it's a time of action that's going to happen. He's not just going to send them up there to create a church and, a, and create just another body, a social class, a social group. But he's coming to bring power in their lives, to bring action in their lives. That's what it was for, beloved. It was used for a call of action. So they sat there. And some of us need to sit there until the Lord breathes on us. Some of us should be waiting and saying, Lord, breathe on me. I, I need to be empowered. I need I need to be refreshed. I need to be strengthened. Somebody should be saying, Lord, breathe on me. Breathe on me, Lord. Breathe on me, Lord. The life that I've been living had been fulfilling. The days that I live in have been fulfilling. I need the breath of God to come into my life. My thoughts are dead. The results that I'm seeing are dead. I need the breath of God in my life to bring life. Anybody know somebody or you need life today? The apostles, the disciples that were sitting there, they needed life, beloved. They needed life. Yes, Lord. They needed life. And many of us, we need life to bring forth that assignment, beloved. To make us stop living for ourselves. This world has made us with a large appetite for our own pleasures. This world has made us with a huge hunger for our own pleasures. Where well, it has to be all about me. It has to be all about my thoughts. It has to be all about my children. It has to be all about my vision. But what, why are we living? Why aren't we living for God? All our world, our life should be surrounded by, like the preacher said, looking, anticipating for the will of God to be done in my life. I want to please you. Anybody want to please God? We got to stop living for ourselves and start living for God. We have to stop living for ourselves. And Lord, what do you anticipate for me? God will give you a day-to-day -day expectation. He'll give you hour for hour and he'll lead you and guide you into all, if you want to be led. The old church if, it used to say, if you want to be kept, they know a keeper. Yes, Lord, he'll keep you if you want to be kept. Well, he'll lead you if you want to be led. He'll lead you even into all truths if you want truths in your life. Yes, Lord. Look at Luke 4. Look at Luke 4. 15 through 21 in the message. Yes, Lord. We use a message because Carla loved the message translation. Luke 15. I mean, excuse me, Luke 4. 4, sorry. Luke 4, 15 through 21. Luke 4, excuse me. 
Luke 4, 15 through 21. Jesus returned, and this is in the mess, this is in the message translation. Jesus returned to Galilee, powerful in the what? Spirit. In the spirit. Yes, Lord. See, when you know your assignment, beloved, when you've gotten in power by the will of God. This is what Jesus was walking in. And if Jesus was walking in, don't you think and expect that he wants us to do this? Jesus returned to Galilee, powerful in the spirit. See, that should be your testimony. When you go to work, you return to work or you return to your community, powerful in the spirit. When you return to your family, you return to them powerful in the spirit. When you have an encounter with the spirit of God, when you have an encounter with Jesus, you return to them in the spirit, powerful, moved by the spirit of God. Not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit. You return to the marriage more powerful in the spirit. Not living for your own self. Not trying to figure out stuff in your own mind, in your own knowledge, but submitting to the will of God. Lord, what do you have for my marriage? What do you have for my children? Lord, what do you have for my ministry? Jesus returned to Galilee, powerful in the spirit. News that he was back spread through the countryside. Yes, Lord. After you have your experience, beloved. Oh, yeah, they're going to talk. Have it when you know when, you, when the Lord touched you. Was they talking about you? When the Lord transformed you, was they talking about you? News of broad shattered when the power of the Spirit moved upon your life. And just as they did with Jesus, this is a, these are the same testimonies that his disciples, his children are going to have. He said he taught in their meeting places to everyone's acclaim and pleasure. He came to Nazareth, Nazareth, where he had been raised. As he always did on the Sabbath, he went to the meeting place. When he stood up to read, he handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found a place where it is written. Yes, Lord. Anybody love this part right here? Are y'all following me? Because this is your job right here. Come on and tell somebody this is your job. Come on, tell the neighbor next to you. Tell them this is your job. You was looking for something to do. You might not be the best singer. You might not be the greeter. You might not be in the media. But this right here is your job. I said this is your job. You might not be the parking attendant. You might not be the announcer. But somebody say this right here is my job. I found what I'm supposed to do. I found what I'm supposed to do. Are you ready today, believers? Believers, are you ready today? Are you ready today? Yes, yeah, so this is your job. God's spirit is what? God's spirit is on me. When you welcome the spirit of God, God's spirit is on me. Come on, somebody help me read this. He has what? Yes, yeah, so any chosen for. He chosen me to, to preach the message. Now, I'm not ordaining you to go hungry for a microphone. I'm not, I'm not ordaining you of creating an appetite for a platform or stage. But he, 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 God's spirit is on me. He's chosen me to preach the message of good news to who? To the poor. Yes, all of us have a message of deliverance to share. Your family got it. Your family is waiting for your message. Your community is waiting for your message. Your sons is waiting for your message. Your daughter is waiting for your message. I wish somebody say, use your message. Use your message. Share the message, beloved. He's chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor. And I was talk, telling the kids in Sunday school, I asked them a portion of the scripture. Well, I asked them a scripture. And they gave me a portion of it. And sometimes the way that we see God can be so negative. 
we can see God as a negative person sometimes. I asked them for a portion of the scripture. And they told me, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's all they knew. And some people living their lives based on half of the word. But that's not all the word. Many of us need to go back to the rest of the word. And I told them, I said, hey, you better find your friend. That right there is your friend. The word is your friend. You need to, you need to learn your friend. Don't you know how, what, when you bring that friend into your, your life, it helps you. Your friend blesses you. So I challenge them to get that verse as their friend. There's more to it than the story. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But what does Jesus say? I come that you what? Come on, welcome that into your life. I come that you might have life and life more abundantly. We got to learn the whole word, not live on half of the word. Half of the word is a whole lie. We got to live the whole word. The whole word. The world is waiting on us, beloved. He said he sent me to announce what? The pardon to prisoners and recovery of the sight to the blind. You got a lot to do, beloved. Yes, are you up to it? He said he sent me to announce the pardon of who. When was the last time you got somebody out of prison? When was the last time you opened the prison door spiritually? When was the last time you prayed and then went and called somebody and got your answered prayer? Yes, yeah, so or some people say, I'm going to just pray for you. But why don't you call them? Why don't you check on them? Why don't you talk to them? Why don't you love them out of prison instead of start trying to be standoffish and trying to be stuck up? When the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, we don't have the right to say who we don't like. We don't have the right to say, I can't stand. We don't have that right. When we're believers of Christ, how many know the power of Jesus? It gives you the the power to love, the power of Jesus, it gives you the power to forgive, the power of Jesus, it gives you the power to heal, that's what the true spirit of God brings to us, power to love like God loves, power to forgive like Jesus forgives, anybody need that power today, anybody welcome that power today, you need to love somebody that's hard to love, you need to forgive somebody that's hard to forgive, you need the power to do it, beloved. It takes the power of God to do this. It's not in our emotions to do it. It's not in our feelings to do it. Don't you know your feelings will betray you. Your emotions will betray you. Your feelings will let you down. But the Spirit of God, He gives you power to live like Christ. He gives you power to walk like Christ. He gives you power. Anybody need the power of God? Jesus said, continue. It my love. If you're going to continue in the love of God, you need the power, beloved. There has to be a suddenly in your life. You need to welcome a suddenly. Suddenly my life was changed. My mind was changed. My thoughts was changed. Suddenly I was transformed. Suddenly into his likeness, into his image. Anybody thank God for suddenly? Suddenly, beloved, suddenly I begin to be about my father's business. Suddenly, I begin to think more on the things of God. Suddenly, I begin to repent. Yeah, so just like Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in a family of unclean. My community unclean. It's when you have an experience with the love of God. It's when you have an experience with the presence of God. When you begin to say, Lord, I, I, I thought I was better than I am. But Lord, I need your help. I am, Lord, I need your help. The more you get into his presence, the deeper you get into his presence, the more you begin to understand, I need you more. Anybody need God more? I say anybody need God more? Yes, Lord. His spirit brings us into the will of God. His spirit brings us the power that shifts us into the will of God. The last verse, and we'll close with that. Look at Acts 4. And we'll let you go. Acts 4, 28 through 31. 
Thank you, Lord. Yes, so Acts 4, 28 through 31. Yes, Lord. God sent us co-workers that are hard to love. So he empowers us. He sends us directors. It's hard to get along with. That's hard to talk to. So he empowers us. But if you don't stay there, you won't receive the power. That's why the Jesus told me you got to stay until you receive the power. You can't walk in boldness in your own strength. You can't walk in boldness in your own knowledge. You can't walk in boldness in your wisdom. Then take the presence and power of God. If we're going to make a difference, beloved. I said if you're going to make a difference in your family, it takes the spirit of God. If you're looking for your life to change, if you're looking for your life to transform, it takes the spirit of God. If you're going to add value to your marriage, to the relationship, it takes the spirit of God. Now, let's, let's look at this. Acts 4, 28 through 31. Are y'all with me today? Are y'all sleeping? All right. Look at it in the New Living Translation. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. And now, O oh Lord, hear their threats. See, that's what you hear every day. Even in your internal threats. See, a lot of us hadn't been empowered because we submit to the internal threats. And it takes us to be out of place. So instead of being in place, many of us have missed our seasons because we weren't where Jesus told us to be at. He told us to be there and we was over there. He told us to do this and we was doing that. And many of us was out of place and have missed our season. But how many thank God that he's a restorer of your season? How many thank God that he'll return what was lost? He'll return what was taken. How many thank God that he's merciful? He didn't kill you when you was out there doing that and doing this. He didn't kill you when you were sitting in obedience rebellion and disobedience. He could have destroyed you. He could have killed you. Yes, Lord, but he had mercy on your life. How many thank God for the mercy of God? It was his mercy. His mercy brought us in according to your will. He said, and now, Lord, hear their threats and give us. Yes, Lord, this is your key right here. This is your key right here. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? This is your key for the next stage of your life, beloved. You're going to need to be in power. You can't go into the next stage like you was six months ago. You need a fresh anointing today. You can't fight the fight of Goliath today with yesterday's anointing. That's why you're falling. That's why you're walking in circle. That's why it's continuing. You need a fresh anointing. Why don't you tell somebody you need a fresh anointing? Goliath is coming. Coming. Yeah, so the giant is coming. The enemy is coming. But the anointing destroys the yoke. But you need a fresh anointing. I wish you high five somebody and tell them to get your fresh anointing. Come on, tell them to take a drink today. Come on, tell them to take a drink today. Come on, tell them to take a drink today. Come on, tell them you need a drink for the next stage of your life. You're too dry. You're too thirsty. Yeah, so you need a drink. Yeah, so your conversation too stale. Yes, Lord. Your conversation too barren. Yeah, so you need a drink. Yeah, so don't you die. Aren't you tired of a dry conversation? Aren't you dry, tired of a dry results? Anybody need fresh results in their life? I want to see my son say, I said today. I want to see my daughter say, I want to see my niece say, I said today. I want fresh results. Anybody came here for fresh results? Somebody shouted fresh results. Come on, shout fresh results. Come on, get unstuck, beloved. Get unstuck. Get unstuck. There's a lot of stuck believers. There's a lot of stuck believers. 
that left Jerusalem. Jesus told them to wait. Don't you leave Jerusalem. But there were some believers that left Jerusalem. I pray that you didn't leave. Yeah, so, but because you're here, why don't you tell somebody to get unstuck. Get unstuck. Get unstuck. Get unstuck. Yes, Lord. Tell them to get stronger now. Come on, tell them to get stronger now. I'm getting stronger. The next stage of my life, I need renewed strength. I need to get stronger. I need to go and surrender more. I said yesterday, surrender not enough. I need to surrender today. Yes, yeah, six months ago, surrender is not enough. I need to surrender today. Submitting last year is not enough. I need to submit today. Is anybody in God's house willing to submit? Yes, Lord. See, the devil has misled the children of God. See, he thinks, and many of the children, you think the enemy have to fight you all the time. You think he has to put something on your body to fight you. You think he got to mess with the children to fight you. You think he got to mess with your money to fight you. But no, all he have to do is occupy your time. All he have to do is occupy your time. If he can get your time, he'll get you away from serving God. If he can get your time, he'll get you away from having faith. If he gets your time, he'll get you away from praising God. If he can get your time, somebody say, Lord, here's my time. Here's my time. Lord, here's my time. Somebody present to God your time as a sacrifice. Lord, here's my time. That's what the enemy wants, beloved. Yes, Lord, he wants your time. He wants your time. Look at this and we finish. The 29th verse. And now, O oh Lord, hear their threats. Yes, Lord. Now listen to this prayer. This should be our prayer to change. This should be our prayer to walk in. And give us what? Give us your service. Is it on here? Come on, anybody in the church today? Anybody in the church today? Yes, Lord. He said, hear their threats and give your service what? Come on and declare. I receive great boldness in my life. Come on and declare. I receive that now. Come on, receive it by the Spirit of God. Great boldness. Receive this by the anointing of God. Great boldness. Come on and give God some praise. Declare I receive it, beloved. I receive great boldness. Great boldness for signs and wonders. Great boldness. Great boldness in preaching your word. Yes, Lord. Stretch out your hand with healing power. Come on, ask God right there. Stretch out your hand, Lord. Stretch out your hand, Lord, with healing power. May miraculous signs and, be, and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Somebody say, Lord, let your name be glorified in my life. Come on, say it and believe it. Stand on your feet and believe this. Let your name be glorified. Let me say your word in boldness. Let me share my testimony in boldness. Let me share my witness in boldness. After this, the meeting place shook. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preach the word of God with boldness. Yes, Lord, your day is here. I said your day is here. Your day is here. Your day is here. Boldness, beloved, to make the difference. The promise is for everybody. When we repent of our sins, the promise is for everybody. It's for everybody. Yes, Lord. To as many is to our children and to as many as the Lord thy God has called. The promise is for everybody. Have you received the promise? The promise to empower you to walk in boldness. The community is waiting for you 
to unlock them. The prophet jo Joel said in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit out upon all flesh. And the sons and daughters are going to prophesy. Young men are going to dream dreams. Where are the dreams at? Why are the sons not dreaming dreams? The old men are going to see visions. Where are the visions in the church? Where are the dreams in the church? In the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. We all need to drink today. This is a call for action, beloved. There's a greater expectation for you because you came here. There's a greater act to much is given, much is required of you. You can't go back to who you were after today. The apostles could not go back to who they were after the power came. The power came to take them. Peter began to preach. He began to preach outside of himself until it brought conviction. This expectation is for you to bring the good news of Jesus until it brings conviction to all those that hear. God is planting you. You're the planting of the Lord, beloved. Peter began to preach that word and many of their hearts was pricked. And he said, call whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Tell your children to call on the name of the Lord. Tell your community to call on the name of the Lord. Tell your nieces to call on the name of the Lord. Tell your nephew to call on the name of the Lord. Peter began to preach and it's ironic that God used the one that rejected him to bring the message of Pentecost. The one that denied him three times is the same one. The one that was a cusser. The one that was outspoken. Always putting his foot in his mouth. I'm not going to say no names, but that's what God uses. Why don't you say yes to the Lord and surrender differently? And surrender again. Stop saying you already did. And surrender again. Stop saying you already did. And submit again. The devils you face recharge every day. Satan is an ancient foe. He's been here way longer than you. He's planned to get your demise long ago. He's an ancient foe. Except God help us. Except God give us the strategy. Satan is coming. The wiles of the devil. His strategic plans against God's people. To get your time. To make you live like social media. To make you live shallow. To make you feel like you're going in circles. And you never came out of the circle. Your life has been a circle. But you came here today to come out of that circle. Come on and tell somebody you're coming out of that circle. Your conversations has been a circle. People hear the same thing. You try to dress it up, but it's the same circle. When the Spirit of God comes into your life, beloved, He empowers us. To love. He empowers us. To believe. He empowers us. To be about our father's business. Your assignment. Is to go and get the lost. Your assignment. Is to set the captives free. It's not to talk about them. I can't stand them. Set them free. I don't like you. Don't No that's not our liberty to do that. We don't have that right to say it. We have the right to let them free, to set them free. That's why God put them in your life. Father, we thank you now. We give you praise. Lord, those that are under the sound of my voice, we pray, Lord, that the word be, would find, Lord, 
good ground and grow that we all would receive the promise that you would change us and take us from glory to glory transform us convict that heart Lord as Peter preached Lord the church was added Father convict hearts convict souls deliver and say in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name we thank God for his presence and his power we thank God for his anointing we thank God beloved we can't do anything in our own strength we need the help of God we need the spirit of God to move in our lives if we're going to get help, it has to be by the Lord. God bless you until we see you again. Amen. Amen.